In today's video, I'm going to share a few ways that I have learned to cope with my phobia. The reason I'm making this video is because I, I feel like there could be people out there who may stumble upon this video who really struggled like me in the past with their phobia. You know, it's not something you're just like, oh, I'm better, you know, I'm not, I don't have any fear or anxiety ever, but like, it's not like that, but I've come a long way. Like I used to be so brittled with anxiety and I'd have these awful panic attacks. Like, and for a long time I developed like this fear of the anxiety. And so when I would start to feel anxious, I would just spiral into panic attack. And it was just so intense. Sometimes I would get physically sick, like literally physically sick because I was so, so stressed out and so anxious and like literally having a panic attack. And you know, if you can relate to that, I'm no medical professional. This is not a medical professional video with advice, but I have real life experience in living with a phobia and learning to cope and live happy despite it. So I really wanted to make this video in hopes that some people out there can relate and feel less alone. Um, people in the comments can like connect with each other on this. You know, if you feel comfortable, share what your phobia is. I feel like the, the what I'm gonna say is very specific to emetophobia, which is the phobia of vomiting. And that is what I mainly struggled with phobia-wise um, growing up. So I'm gonna share some key points and ways that I really learned to cope with this. So I used to be so, so scared of throwing up as a child even. I remember like having this phobia from the time I was a little girl and growing up, I still to this day struggle with it at times. And I think a big contributing factor that we need to bring awareness to when it comes to phobias in general is don't feed into it. And what I mean by that is, for example, I had a fear of throwing up. If I was sick or would be sick or see someone else sick, I felt so fearful thinking about these situations that I would I would perpetuate that fear by vocalizing how much I hated it and talking about how scared I was and there is a time and a place to communicate how you're feeling with yourself and with others and to feel your feelings of fear but at the same time like there is some sort of boundaries that you can create so you don't have excessive fear and ruminations plaguing you so for example a way that I really fed into it was is I would affirm to myself how scary it was to be sick rather than affirming to myself it's uncomfortable it's it may feel scary and hard to me but I can do hard things I'm capable um learning you know what exactly about it triggers me feeling out of control the uncertainty not knowing and not having any control over how you feel in your body it can feel scary and so as a kid it would feel really traumatic to me to to go through it and then I would spend months thinking about oh god I hope that doesn't happen again oh god I hope that doesn't happen again shift your thinking when you when you become aware of that and this is why like mindfulness and meditation are such great practices because it teaches you how to become aware and observe what's going on rather than being sucked into it and becoming your emotions so the first thing don't allow yourself to feed into it and it takes time to slow that momentum down if you've been having these same thoughts for day after day, year after year, they are pathways in our brains. And so to create new neural pathways, we have to have new thoughts, new feelings, new beliefs. And one of the ways to do that is to reaffirm it to yourself. And then through experiences, realizing that what you're fearing is truly not even as scary as you think. The worst part about it is your fear. It's not even necessarily the action. I remember even I would get, as a child, if I would um, grow up, right after afterwards even during it I would think this really isn't that bad and I would have like this immediate sense of relief like oh I can't believe I spent months scared of that but that's the thing with phobias they're irrational yeah they don't always make sense logic that doesn't mean you don't feel it it's that you have control over your thoughts and start implementing that control when you become aware of what you're thinking and saying is not serving you and you're perpetuating this story of fear change it even to just something neutral it doesn't have to be like, oh, I love this. You know, it could just be like, oh, you know, I may feel discomfort. Having an affirmation like, I may feel uncomfortable. I may feel discomfort. I may feel anxiety and fear, but I can handle this. Anxiety and fear cannot hurt me. I'm capable of doing hard things. 
weeks throwing up is normal. You know, these are things like that were really hard for me to even say out loud without having anxiety. When I, I would not be able to say the word vomit. I remember as a child, I never said throw up. I said, do it. I would not say the words because it made me anxious. Face that fear, say the words. Say, it is okay if you throw up. You probably won't, but if you do, it is okay. And, you know, saying that to myself, I would have this, like, fear, like, no, 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 I can't. The antidote to a lot of that anxiety, willingness, acceptance. Be willing to feel what you feel. Accept the fear that you're feeling. And, you know, be like, okay. Even just say it out loud like this, like, I feel really anxious because of X, Y, and Z. Write it down, say it out loud, and say, take a deep breath. Focus on your exhale more so, like, the length thinning your exhale and a pause at the end and tell yourself, I forgot where I was going, but it was good. Tell yourself that you can handle this, that feelings are just feelings. It's okay, they can't hurt you. And a lot of this is easier said than done. You know, it's easy to say this stuff, but sometimes when you're really in the moment, especially if you're having a panic attack, you know, this stuff may sound silly and you're not in a place where you can implement and use these tools. So a lot of times we have to send ourselves and come to a place of feeling grounded and calm. Then we can begin healing. Realizing that it's not the situation that hurts, it's your perspective on the situation. So oftentimes like even uncomfortable, unpleasant or bad situations um, the worst part is the fear, the anxiety, the thoughts, the rumination. So even when you're experiencing those things, it comes and it goes. And if you're able to live presently, you're able to let it go rather than carry that with you. So facing your fear is finding a way to think about what you're afraid of. And when intense emotions begin to rise and overwhelm you, you find a way to be okay with that easier said than done. Everybody can do it. It's vital that during these processes of healing that you are radically self-compassionate. You have radical self-love regardless of everything going on and how hard it may be that you're patient with yourself in this process. You know, learn, especially when you are doing a lot of this heavy work, learn to baby yourself, learn to take care of yourself, learn to treat yourself like you were your own child or your best friend, like people, some people say. I like to picture myself as if I were a child in my care because I, I would do anything. You know, if I was babysitting, I would do anything to protect that child simply because they are a child. You know what I mean? Like you would do anything to make sure they're comforted and taken care of, especially when you love, one that's yours. So um, think about that and you know sometimes a mother's job is to comfort and neutralize the situation when you begin catastrophizing what could go wrong or you're having this black and white thinking neutralize it and come to just something general a general statement it doesn't have to be so specific um and lastly i wanted to share a couple things that i do that i've discovered that really help me when i'm in the middle of having a panic attack. Um, so for example, let's say I'm having a panic attack and it's centered around my emetophobia and the thought that I keep having that's steering the anxiety is, oh no, what if I throw up? You can replace this with, you know, whatever thought you have. Start with asking yourself, what makes this true? And looking at a bigger picture of what makes this not true. And um, I will get my journal out and I will write down the exact thought that I'm having, how it makes me feel. And I will write down neutral statements as well about it. And oftentimes like this is what I can do when the anxiety's not too crazy. But if I am really, you know, having a full blown panic attack where I, you, you just like, you feel like you're having an out of body experience. Like assuming you know what it's like to have a panic attack. Best thing for me personally has been to go walk. I, I really like going outside is my number one thing. I have to, I have to get some air. I have to walk aimlessly and, and just, you know, get into my body because that walking really helps me get out of my head and it helps me not feel so out of my body. If I raise my heart rate, just slightly walking, shaking your body out, that helps. Um, stomping your feet, that sounds silly, but that really does like help 
get into your body and talking to somebody I trust sometimes helps just you know telling them I feel this way and, you know almost using them as like a verbal diary and just having someone you love tell you it's okay but sometimes that just really doesn't help me so the number one thing that does is walking in nature being in nature deep breathing um there have been times where I've had panic attacks and just sat there doing breathing exercises until I have felt better and I mean sometimes I just be sitting there for a while doing you know box breathing you know what happens is when I get so upset my breathing gets irregular and I might especially start to hyperventilate and then that makes you feel worse and then feeling worse makes you feel more anxious so what really helps is walking breathing exercises box breathing through breathing exercises you're able to feel more into your body and you know just help regulate yourself um another thing that I will do sometimes if I am just having a lot of anxiety I'm really riddled with anxiety and it's to the point where I'm almost like physically ill then what I will do is I will lay down um, sometimes I can't sometimes I really just have to go walk I, I feel too restless too anxious to sit still um, but if I'm able to or if it's real late and I've been having anxiety for like days on end almost like it comes and it goes but you know sometimes you go through periods like that we are releasing a lot of stuff out of you and you know a lot of times I didn't know how to cope with it but one thing that really helped putting a cold rag on my head especially on my temples the back of my neck and having a fan on my face if you have access to a fan and I put on parks and recreation that's my comfort show so really taking care of yourself as if you were physically sick having a broken leg or a physical ailment needs to be tended to just like a mental illness would need to be tended to or not mental illness but a mental problem any sort of problem you know anxiety that stuff is valid having trauma is valid allow yourself the space to heal and to give yourself time to rest in bed and have a cold rag on your head and you know really tend to yourself almost like as if you were sick I think it really does help to nurture yourself in that way so yeah panic attacks breathing exercises walking being in nature animals my animal speaking of animals my little kitty cat um my animals have helped me more than anything I feel like too like having some sort of community and family and relationships that are really high vibrational and healing that is so helpful in overcoming trauma it is it is part of the key is having a support group you know there were times in my life where I felt like my support group was my animals and looking back that is very valid you know a lot of times we we don't have like people you know sometimes all you have is you and you know that counts your people and your animals count too you know and animals aren't for everybody but I wanted to throw that in there um because they're very very healing and then you know for general maintenance of phobia healing you know things like mindfulness practices yoga really helps you Yoga helps heal trauma by incorporating your body into the process of trauma, into processing the trauma. And it can also be a way to build a community if you went to classes. And this is my last little tip. It's a little weird, but one of the things that I think about that really brings me relief when I am having a panic attack is I think about how good it'll feel when it's over. And that's what I focus on. I don't focus on, God, this has to be over. When will this be over? I'll just think, you know, I bet, you know, I can, this is uncomfortable right now, but I know I can manage it. And then once it's over, I bet I'll feel so good. Like, I think about how when you cry really, really hard, and then you have that, like, euphoric, like, blissful endorphin rush feeling of, like, you know, you just, after crying really hard, you just feel a lot better sometimes. And I think of that feeling, and I'm like, like, oh, you know, that feeling of like endorphins and relief. And I just focus on how good that would feel. Um, and for me, that helps. So I wanted to share that just in case anybody benefited from that. Because remember that your panic cannot last forever. And it helps me to look forward to that moment that I know it will inevitably subside. Because you know it will eventually. It has to. That's all I've got for this video. For those of you who do not know me, I'm Alexis and I make a lot of videos about trauma and my experiences with trauma and how I've healed from trauma. Yeah, all things healing, wellness, in the hopes that by sharing my experience,
experiences that are so valuable to me, the lessons that I've learned that are so valuable to me. I can help inspire other people to heal, give you tools to use to heal yourself, and also just be an advocate for this stuff works, you know? I used to be one of those people I'd hear about like meditation and stuff like that and it's not, you know, if anything, I'd just be like, oh yeah, that's cool. But you know, the intense emotions are often just overwhelming and like hard to manage, but there's real science-based stuff and that's what I talk a lot about in these videos. Evidence-based things that work, that help you heal. Everybody heals differently. Everybody needs a different combination of things to heal. Um, and the first step is realizing that healing is not fixing something that's broken, you're not broken because you're whole and you're complete as you are. So fixing that perception, that's the first step. So if you like me, you like my vibe, you like my style, you like how I talk, you like my values, you like my content, like, comment, subscribe, you know the drill. All that stuff supports me. If you want to give me money, comment, I'll give you my cash out. I mean, it's shot in the dark, but I might as well say it. You never know. Someone might be feeling extra generous and want to give me a tip because they had a breakthrough watching this video. That'd be cool. Anyway, um, but I'm not relying on that. This isn't about money. This isn't about pain this is about helping people and also reiterating the stuff to myself and solidifying these lessons into my own brain so that I can heal as well we can all heal together thank you so much hope you have a great rest of your day or night and I'll see you next time I've seen a lot of change been through a lot of pain some things are not the same as they were a year ago but all will be okay I move on each and every day The past is where it stays Way back a year ago